everyone, Alexandra here again. Today I taught a reviewing shortcut, previously known as Clubhouse. And what better person to review this than someone who's worked in project management and knows all of the tools out there. So I'm going to look at this as someone who has tested everything out there. And keep in mind, I am only reviewing the build feature, so the software management feature, because the tool does come with some extra features, like the knowledge base tool that's still in beta, and some other extra options if you want to use shortcut to its advanced capacity. Now, before we get started, the tool does make it super easy to switch from Trello or from some other tools. You can also check these kind of in the integration section. So to get started, you are on your main homepage. And this is where you and your managers and your teammates will get to see kind of what their work is, their active path, any upcoming due dates and the activity feed. So this is like a general overview of the things that you need to do. And really the first step you should always look for with shortcut is creating a story. But if you click here on this little arrow, you have some other options in here because since we have really nothing in here, we might want to create a project first. And the project is going to be something like marketing for a specific company and then you can add some description in here you can even customize this and then just create the project and now when you go to create a story something like testing add in something in here add in a couple of tasks and this is just super simple to use now the interface of the tool isn't up to par with other tools like monday.com or clickup but you have to understand that this is because there's just a lot of small features in here. And let's just say the tool shortcut in our case is just better for agile teams working with sprints and iterations and epics. Now the story slash task management feature is quite advanced because you can just set relationships. So if the story is related to another, if there's any blocks, if there's any duplicates, and you can add external links straight away or attach files and you will find them in here. And on the right side, you get to decide which project this goes into. You can also just go and schedule it already, decide what team's going to work on this story. If there's maybe an epic for this, you can just go on and create it. If there's a specific iteration, but we are going to look at these a bit later. And if this is maybe a feature, a bug, or just something else, and let's say this is a bug, and the requester is really the person creating the story, then you have the owner who is maybe a manager who needs to keep up to date with these. And you also have the time estimates, so to say, but instead of time, you have your usual story point estimation options, but you can add in your maybe a due date. And of course, you can always add story followers. So ideally, you will want all of your managers or maybe some team members to keep up with this. And instead of tags, you have these labels, which you can use either to kind of describe what a task is about. So maybe if it's like on the back end side, on the front end side, on SEO, whatever. And you can also use these tags slash labels to prioritize stories. And then we're just going to click on create story. And we have our first story also visible under projects here under more projects and in our marketing project. You can also just head over to stories here and you will get to see all of them. And you can actually drag and drop this to move it from one state to another. So this is kind of like um, Kanban board with some filtering options on the left side so that maybe you might want to just check these stories that you own or that you requested and you have some extra filters in here and there's you know quite a bunch of these filters and honestly it's one of the tools that has the most options for filtering before i move on i want to kind of show you this menu here at the top as well i mean you have your usual search option 
So if you know you are working on a task, like maybe a story, like testing, you can just look for it here and you'll find it without having to go over to maybe a huge list of tasks that you might have in your project. And it's very interesting that the search options are quite advanced and you have some operators in here so that maybe you might not remember the exact name of a task, but you remember maybe a word from it and its project or its owner, you can just use these search operators in here by just clicking on them. So this is very handy. Then on the right side, you have a power bar, which is essentially a go-to search option for everything. You can search for, you know, just elements or features in this app to actual things you've created, like the story we just put together. Then you have here the learning option and some help and you will have this onboarding sign to kind of take you through everything with a link to the shortcut university. And of course you have this recently viewed option. So, so far I haven't seen this in any other tool. It basically shows you kind of what tasks you've looked at. So this is very handy for managers handling multiple deadlines, multiple teams, multiple stories. You want to go and use this feature in case you just get lost among the workload. And you have the activity option, which similarly shows you what you've done. The activity feature is actually part of many other project management tools, but this only shows you things you have done, so actions you have taken, while the recently viewed feature actually shows you what you've looked at. Then we're heading over to Epics. Again, you can create an Epic from here at the top. We have created one first when we created our story, but you can also just create it from scratch, maybe add a milestone to it, set a state for it, and so on. With epics, and this is something I do not love that much about Shortcut, the filtering options are placed in a different zone in the app, really. So when you have your stories, the filtering options are on the left side, but with epics, they are here at the top, and it's just a bit different to use the sorting from here. Remember that you have a different view option, and that's columns, which again, they are similar to Kanban boards, but you don't drag them by just clicking on them. Instead, you have to head over to this button here and just drag it under the column you want. For everything you create here, you have these options here as well to basically move from a different state if you don't want to drag and drop it. Or, you know, you have your option to follow or not this task or epic, so to say. And then we head over to our milestones and here again we can create a milestone like a feature launch create the milestone again the filter options are here at the top you also have the option to move around your view from column to table usually you will always go with one and stick to that throughout the entire shortcut app but it's up to you to edit the milestone, just click on it and you've got in here your editing options, maybe some epics if you have one. For example, let's say this is an epic. It's going to go here and then as you start working on this, you will have your burn down chart and a velocity chart and, you know, just some other extra handy analytics sections. If we head over to milestones, we can always just drag an epic under our milestone so you can take epics out of your epic backlog and move them over to one of your milestones. And now we are heading to our iterations. So these are essentially just time box periods of development time for a specific collection of stories. And you can use these for multiple epics and multiple projects. Just click on create an iteration and I'm just going to name this. Choose a start and an end date. Maybe add in your team in here and create the iteration. And you can always just create a story in this specific iteration, or we can go to our stories, like on the story, head over to iteration and select where we want to add it. 
And now when we go back to the iteration, the story is placed under this specific one. With, again, your filter options in here. Next, we're heading to the roadmap feature. And you will only see your milestones and epics in here when you add the start and end dates for them. So we can go on and create a milestone. So we can go to our milestones and to add the start and end date. Just choose whatever milestone you have. Go to start here. And you can also add an end date. And now when we go back to our roadmap, we are going to see the milestone in here. So all of your milestones and epics will be displayed here so that you can kind of keep up with the progress on your project. Then we have the teams option where we can just create new teams as we wish from here. And let's say we want a marketing team and we can add a specific mention name just for this team, kind of like in Slack, create the team. And then when you click on it, you can create a list of members from here on the right side. And then you are also going to be able to add stories for this specific team. For example, we can go over to this and just change the team to marketing. And now when we head over to our marketing team, the story appears here. Under more, again, you have your project options and you also have the labeling features, which again, I recommend you edit these. Create a label from this, something like maybe urgent, change the color to something descriptive, and you've got a new label or tag, so to say. And then here, you will also have some options to keep up with what's going on with your stories, epics, projects, whatever. Specifically, you have these reports and the managers will also find the status option in here handy because you can use it to kind of see what a team member has worked on, what they are working on, what's ready to be reviewed. So this is just super handy for having a good overview of everything that's going on within the team. And of course, like with other apps, you have some extra options to like customize this. So for example, you might want a dark mode or something like a system setting, which is really the light mode, but you can also go to your own settings in here and you have a bunch of extra options, including kind of deciding what you want workflows to be like. I could not find any loaded workflow, so workflow template, but you do have the story templates option. You also have quite a few integrations. Now the list isn't extensive, but it's decent. Yes, there are tools for project management that do have more integrations, but these are really like the ones you truly need. So it depends on the type of teams you want to work with in Shortcut. And this is it. Yes, there's a bunch of other small features extra that you can use, like creating your own keyboard shortcuts. But this is really for the options to invite new users and set some roles. Not that detailed when it comes to permissions, but this will do again for the development and product teams that might use shortcut again. In fact, if you head over to the main home page, you will see that the solution is mainly created for engineering and product teams. So if you are in charge of marketing or maybe if you need this for your marketing agency, this will not work that well. Instead, think of Shortcut as an alternative to other tools you might be using right now to manage your tickets, bugs, features, stories, whatever. Now, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you soon. But of course, I'm looking forward to hearing what you want me to review next. Have an amazing day.